All right, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, so today we're going to be talking about building fast and beautiful apps with Xamarin Forms, um, which might surprise you. Um, so I'm Michael Ridland, a Xamarin MVP, community blogger. Uh, do lots of open source stuff, um, and basically um, been doing Xamarin for five years and have a team. And we love Xamarin, and Xamarin is what we do. Um, so just the agenda for today, we're going to go through some misconceptions and truths. Um, look at some of the styling features in Xamarin Forms. Um, go through some performance tips, understanding um, the layout system, um, and then go through the pages um, and layouts and controls that are available in Xamarin Forms um, and some of the animations. Can I ask how many people um, have used Xamarin Forms before? How many people are using it a lot, full time? A few people? Cool, so we've got some people that have been doing Xamarin Forms, which is good. Sometimes that answer can be pretty low. Um, so is Xamarin Forms slow? Um, I guess it's uh, the big question. A lot of people say that it is. Um, you, you read a lot about it on the internet. Um, so why do people say it's slow? Uh, that's what they heard on Reddit. Um, I don't think you should believe everything you hear on Reddit. Um, some people, the, some of the comments ha have some validity, but um, many of the comments um, uh, sound like somebody that's used it for about two hours and, and gave up after that. Um, so past experiences, so if you tried Xamarin Forms when it was 1.0 um, or 18 months ago, um, it was a lot, the, the experiences that you can do now and the apps that you can develop now are a lot different um, than how it was when it was first released, because it was pretty slow when it was first released. But they've built a, a lot of features that actually enable you to build better performing Xamarin Forms apps. So there's certain parts of Xamarin Forms that are slow and there's certain parts that are fast. I guess that's what we'll be going over today. Um, so just to sort of understand this, there's areas that you can go towards that are actually going to give you a better performing app. Um, and Xamarin Forms is easy. So easy can be deceiving. So it's easy to go in and uh, download um, Xamarin and start using a Xamarin Forms application. Um, and it feels like a WPF application, so you're going to do lots of nesting and add lots of UI elements. Um, but you're still on a phone with limited resources. And if you are um, in WPF, I've done WPF in the past, and if you did WPF poorly, um, and the views weren't done very well, the application wasn't built very nice. Uh, it was quite forgiving. It wasn't like the application was going to fall over. But if you do that in Xamarin Forms, um, then you can get yourself into trouble. It's just not as forgiving. Um, so with Forms, you have to build pages with performance in mind if you want something that's going to run really fast. So Xamarin Forms is fast, but it's not forgiving. So I just wanted to give you like... So this is taken from the Xamarin website. It's actually, um, should I actually be using Xamarin Forms or should I be using the Xamarin traditional um, Xamarin iOS and Xamarin um, Android? So if you actually have a look at this, you can see um, it's saying for Xamarin Forms should be for data entry applications, prototypes, when you're not using a lot of platform-specific APIs or you don't have a, a highly polished um, design. So I'm just going to give you a demo of some apps. So it actually, you'll see a bit of a delay on the screen up there, but um, when it's on the phone, it's a lot faster. So this one might take a little bit. Uh, put the internet back on. So I'm just going to go through, add my address here, select my address, it's going to go back to the server, hopefully the internet doesn't take too long. So you can see there we've got some light, nice spinning animations, some animations when we actually find the address, if we go through, create a new account.
Use Touch ID, so some native APIs there. Go through. Have some animations where we go through. Put some data in. Same animation. So I'm just going to find some practices. So um, all this stuff that I'm showing is built with Xamarin Forms. So as I'm going through what you actually see. Um, so given that, so the apps that I just demoed there, do you think they were built with the Xamarin iOS or Xamarin Forms? Um, well, they were built, built with um, Xamarin Forms. Um, so you can actually do um, what it says you can't do here. Um, and the great thing about Xamarin Forms is you can actually do a highly polished design, um, and it's still going to be cross-platform. You're still going to have a XAML page to edit, um, and you're still going to have the cross-platform MVVM um, and one code base to actually manage. Most of those applications you saw there were about 90% um, code sharing between iOS and Android. So what's fast? So pages with less elements. Um, so the more elements that you add to a Xamarin Forms page, the more that uh, it can slow down. Um, post layout, animations, and translations. We'll get into this a little bit later. Um, so if you're leveraging the performance features that are available in Xamarin Forms, um, and if you're, if you're following the recommendations that Xamarin provide, um, you can actually build a fast application. Um, and there's some third-party tools like FF Image Loader. Um, that you can use. So in, in Xamarin Forms, and um, especially on Android, um, this is like more of an Android issue, uh, every time you uh, load up an image, it's converted into a, a bitmap, so you can easily get um, out of memory exceptions. FF Image Loader will actually um, cache images and it will reduce the size uh, before it gets translated into a bitmap in the Android system. So um, if, you're, if you've got a lot of images and you're doing Xamarin Forms, uh, on Android, you definitely want to be using FF Image Loader. So, um, so what's slow? Uh, overloaded pages with deep nesting. Um, so the one thing about Xamarin Forms, this is probably solvable if you actually really wanted to do it. it you're still going to look at two to three seconds for the app startup um, versus less than a second um, from a file new um, Xamarin iOS or Xamarin Android application. So um, you probably could work around it by actually having some native areas that load up first before Xamarin Forms loads up, uh, causing too many layout cycles, which we'll, we'll go into a little bit later. Um, dynamically building UI elements, which is um, something that you like to do, but if you can avoid it, it uh, can actually um, speed up your application. And if you're actually doing a lot of sort of dynamic building of UI elements, it, it can be a problem. And you don't actually need to do it. There's actually ways that you can build your UI without having to do um, dynamically building your UI elements uh, and ignoring the performance recommendations. So how do I build fast and beautiful apps with Xamarin Forms? Um, so beautiful, it's not always about the platform. Um, so when we build apps, we actually start um, with UX design. So actually, um, if you try and take some big ERP application and just put it onto a mobile device, you're going to have a lot of problems. Um, you're just going to be, you're not really going to have a refined UI um, where you only got the elements that you need. So normally we do UX design and we actually iterate it. Uh, we'll iterate on it multiple times so we can actually um, refine the design so it only contains the things that it needs to contain. Um, and then once we do all the iterations on the UX design, and then we'll move to the visual design. So uh, an app that starts with good visual design ends in a, like a good visual um, experience on the device. 
So if you don't have the visual designs, you don't actually know what's going to come out of the app development. But any app that we've worked on where we actually folk have visual designs that have done really nice, it, it ends up nice. So there, there's definitely a, um, a distinction there. Um, and fast is not always about the platform. So uh, in your application, there's lots of different things you can do for caching. So you can do data caching, um, view caching, uh, image caching, um, and sort of background downloading. Um, also the sequence. So I've seen some applications where people will actually go and they'll start downloading things, um, and then they'll wait for that download to finish, and then they'll create all their views, and then they'll try and display their views, where really you could actually create or you, or you could start the download in the background, and then you can um, push your views while it's downloading in the background, um, show your view, and then when the download is completed, you can actually populate the missing parts of the view, um, which is as much... Um, you've already loaded the view, so you're just updating various areas of the application. Um, so I'll just talk about some styling features of Xamarin Forms. So here we've got the um, app resources. So uh, in the application uh, dot resources, you can have a, a like a dictionary which contains uh, different styles. Um, so you can see here, I've got a heading style. The target type is a label, um, and I've got the sizes on there. I've got a font family, um, different text colors. Um, so this is uh, when you have a design which is kind of static; it's not going to change. You don't want to actually um, have like a light theme or a dark theme. You can just put them directly into your application. Otherwise, if you, have, um, you want to change styles um, on the fly, you can actually um, dynamically uh, modify the, um, the application resources. Um, so another thing you can do is custom fonts. So um, all you need to do is include the true type font in each project um, and set the font family on the label. You will need a, a custom renderer for pickers, um, but it can be done. And um, a lot of the time, if you get an app that's been visually designed, it's going to have a custom font. And it does make a difference on how your app looks in the end. So Xamarin Forms, a lot of it is actually um, built on custom renderers. Uh, so anytime you have an entry or a list view, pretty much every control that you use in Xamarin Forms is going to have a custom renderer. So in this case, in this diagram, you can see we've got this entry here. Um, for iOS, we've got a, an entry renderer. Um, in this case, um, we've done a custom uh, renderer. So the base renderer is an entry renderer. Which So basically what happens in Xamarin Forms is you have an entry, which is a model that you're saying, this is how I want it to actually look. And then for each platform, you have the custom implementation, which will actually show the custom, um, the custom UI elements. And in this case, um, my entry is actually inherited from the entry renderer and you're actually making the changes yourself. Um, so this is a, an example of a, a custom renderer. So you can see here um, I'm inheriting the label renderer um, to create my own uh, font label renderer. Um, so exporting a, um, a label um, with the font um, label renderer. And then we can also do that um, so in that case, previously, I was inheriting the built-in um, label render, which is already there. But you can also do it um, where you actually um, uh, implement the base renderer and you have full control over the, the native APIs. So basically, um, where we've got this Google Map control is the one that we saw on the app before. Um, it's pretty much just a, a, nat a window to native. So you have full control over there. You've got full access to the native APIs. Uh, and you can basically put whatever native um, third-party element or anything that you like in there. Um, yeah, so that's custom renderers. So um, effects, uh, effects are like custom renderers, but they, they are attached. So rather than um, using inheritance, because um, with a custom renderer, you always have a control, and then you have um, a custom renderer, and that's a one-to-one -one mapping. Whereas a con control in Xamarin Forms can have multiple effects um, applied to it. So it's, it's more like a, a feature. So it's, it's just a lighter version of a custom renderer. Um, so you can change the properties um, on the native control. Um, so you can actually have an effect that only comes into effect on iOS and on um, Android. It's not used. Um, so you use that when there's certain things you want to do on certain platforms. So yeah, so it's added as a feature to the control. 
So you can see some examples there. You've got like an underline effect, a border effect, or a shadow effect, whatever you like. Um, and this is like a similar diagram where you're adding the edit effect to, to the slider. So you've got the on attach methods, detach methods. I'll take you through some code samples in a second. So you can see here, um, this is the iOS border effect. On the attach method, um, it's changing the border color to a purple and the border width. And then when it's detaching, it's changing the, the border width back. Um, and then on this entry element, it's actually adding the, um, the border effect. So one thing that uh, was recently released, which is pretty cool, is native embedding. So what it actually allows you to do is um, take um, a control hierarchy, which is Xamarin Forms and it's cross-platform, and directly embed um, native elements into it. So if we actually, um, so this here is the split view controller, which is iOS only. Um, and you can either do that in code or you can do that in XAML. So we can see this um, picture here. You see we've got uh, native embedding, um, the Android widget. So text view um, is basically uh, an entry element um, for Android. Whereas if we look down further where we've got the iOS, we've got a UI label. So anything um, that starts with UI means UI kit. So we've got like a UI label there, um, a UI text view, which is like a, an entry field. The good thing about um, native embedding is it actually supports the, the data binding. So you can basically take a native element um, from iOS and you can actually um, data bind directly to it. Um, one of the other things you can do is um, handle different screen sizes. So if you actually just have a look um, over here, um, I've got a style for the height request and depending on if it's a phone or a tablet, I'm setting a different value. Um, and you can also do that in code, so you know if it's a tablet or if it's a phone. Um, sometimes you want some more um, granular um, abilities to change size. So generally, uh, these days, which is it's quite easy thing to do, is on one of the first pages, I just hook up to the size changed, and then in the app, I can set the width and height, and then I can come and use that width and height um, later um, in the application if I want to change the size of things. Um, so let's just have a look at an application. So we'll just take you through some of the features. So if you've not seen um, like what, what a Xamarin uh, application or solution looks like, um, in this case, this is just an, an Android and iOS project. Um, so I've got my portable class library here. Um, you can actually do .NET standard, um, but we've just been doing uh, PCLs at the moment. We'll probably look at .NET standard when it um, has been out for a while. Because um, with Xamarin, when PCLs first came out, we had lots of uh, trouble with that. So a little bit scared to go to .NET standard and what that actually means. Um, so we're sticking with the PCLs for now. So this is the portable library. Um, so this actually has our different XAML controls our um, C-sharp, which is shared. Then you've got our iOS project, um, which references the portable class library. Um, so one thing to note, uh, when you go into the iOS project, you'll see things that um, exactly is exactly the same as what an iOS developer will see. So if you're an iOS developer, you know what an application delegate is. Um, you know this uh, finished launching event. Um, whereas if you go into the Android project, um, you have an activity. So this is what uh, an Android developer um, normally does. Uh, but the goal of what we're doing with Xamarin Forms is actually to keep a lot of the code out of these two projects and keep it in a, a shared library. So if we actually have a look at some of the features that I talked about, so you can see here in my application, I've got my resources in here. So I've got my heading style, I've got some font sizes. So just taking this uh, grey button style, for example. If I go and find that. So on this post view, I've just got the style applied via a static resource. I mean, it's, it's quite good to have them, especially if you have, if you have a large application that's got lots of common styles. Um, it's good to set them up at the start, um, and then you can use them um, across the board. So 
So one of the other things that I discussed was uh, custom renderers. So in this application that I've uh, been playing around with, I needed to have a list view where I could actually um, know where it had been scrolled to. So the normal list view in Xamarin Forms doesn't actually have this um, event on it. So I had to actually um, inherit from the Xamarin Forms list view um, and I've added uh, like a little scrolled action there. And then down in my iOS project, as you can see, I'm going to my iOS under renderers. I've got my advanced list view renderer. So up here I declare that I've got my advanced list view renderer. Um, my advanced list view has a renderer of advanced um, list view renderer. So you can see it's a one-to-one -one mapping, um, but I didn't really have a choice because I needed to get inside the control. Um, and I'm inheriting from the built-in list view renderer. I mean, the list view renderer that comes with Xamarin Forms is quite complex, so I wouldn't want to go and um, create my own one. Um, it's better just to leverage what's actually there. Um, and all I do is uh, when there's a new element, I um, hook up to the scrolled event, and then I pass that through to the, the portable class library. So um, Xamarin Forms, even though it's sort of it's cross-platform, it really has all these different extensibility points where if you actually get into like trouble or there's something that needs to be native, you can actually jump out of Xamarin Forms and you can go do things in native either via effects or through custom renderers. So another example um, that we talked, or another thing we talked about was the effects. So uh, by default, an entry in um, Xamarin Forms on iOS actually has a border. So to remove that, I've just created a, um, a no border entry effect. And then down here in my iOS project, you can see I've got my no border, which basically um, grabs the control, which is a text field, um, sets the border style, um, sets the background color. Um, so it actually makes the, the background, or removes the, um, the border that we didn't actually want. So um, just going over some performance tips, obviously um, uh, Xamarin Forms performance is, is a big deal and people um, do want to actually know about this, so we'll just go just a little bit into it. Um, so previously when um, in the earlier versions of Xamarin Forms, the list view, every time you created, saw a new cell, a new um, view was created. Um, and then this whole new view was created, then the binding context was updated. So uh, this, um, especially before they had XAML C, it was um, parsing and inflating all this um, XAML um, every time you saw a, a new cell. So now we have this thing called list view uh, cell recycling. So it basically it takes the views and um, allows you to recycle them. So rather than um, creating a new view every time, it'll take an old one that's actually already displayed and it'll just update the binding context. So um, there's just a certain amount of views. I mean, if you actually uh, test it out, you can notice there's only three or four views, um, depending on how many actually displayed on the screen, and it'll just actually um, recycle them through. Um, iOS, um, it's actually sort of a technique that iOS and Android um, use on their list as well. So the performance improvements are huge. Um, it's uh, disabled by default, so you have to go in and actually enable it. Um, so you can see here the retain element is actually the default, um, but um, recycle element is what you want. So I've actually done that on this project. So in my advanced list view, um, I've inherited from it and I've actually changed the caching strategy to uh, recycle element. So um, the data template selector, so it allows, so the cell recycling obviously gives you the performance, but sometimes you want to um, have the cell recycling, but you want to have different types of views displayed in your, um, your list. Um, so the data template selector will actually allow you to have these different types of views, um, and it gives you the support for the cell recycling. So in this example, you can see, could you imagine the, the chat window in, in iOS where you've got um, uh, an incoming message or you've got an outgoing message. So you can see here when the template is selected, um, 
if the message um, is incoming, it'll show the incoming data template, otherwise it'll show the outgoing data template. Just to give you an example of where it's used to actually build an app. So this um, list here, this is a um, like a list view, Xamarin Forms list view, and it's using a, a data template selector. So um, where you've got the like the header up there, that's actually one data template type. Um, the next one down is a different one. Um, further down, where you're actually listing out the stocks here, that's a, a data template type, and it's just replacing the data, so you're getting that cell recycling. And then also when you're actually going down here, it's actually um, using the cell recycling. Um, and any time, I mean, we'll go into this later, but any time you have a really um, big view to show in Xamarin Forms, um, you want to be leveraging um, a list view because the list view actually doesn't do calculations for things that are off the screen, whereas if you're using a grid with like a scroll view, it actually calculates everything. So you will, if you have a huge um, page which you're not using uh, a list view and it's over sort of like uh, six screens um, with a scroll view, um, you're going to feel the performance in that. So uh, XAML, um, XAML C. So previously in the early versions of XAML, um, XAML was parsed and inflated at runtime. Um, but now you can actually have XAML C enabled, which means that uh, it's parsed and turned into IL at compile time. Um, so it's faster, there's a small app size, so they don't actually include all the XAML files in the project. Um, and you see XAML errors at build time. So this um, is some data on XAML C versus inflated versus compiled. The blue one is the inflated performance, how long it takes, um, where the red one is the compiled. So overall, it's about five times faster. It does increase the build time a little bit um, by 15 seconds, but it's worth it for the performance. And that uh, data is thanks to Matthew Robbins of MFractor. So um, one of the biggest things that you can do with Xamarin Forms performance is like simplify the layout and reduce the nesting. Um, one of the best ways to do that is actually know your controls, use the right control for the right job. So for example, um, this person has basically three labels of one, two, three, um, and they're trying to add padding and spacing, um, and they're doing it using a content view, which is actually sort of um, adding lots of extra native views that don't need to be there. Um, whereas if they known that the stack layer just had padding and spacing, then they could have just done that. I mean, it's just good to, even if you don't know the full API set of Xamarin Forms, just when you're building a view, just think about how, how can I, what's going to be available for me to be able to reduce the size of this um, and the nesting or the size of this view. Um, so know your control. So avoid relative layout. So um, Xamarin recommend, well, they recommend that you don't use it. Obviously, it was one thing that they brought out when Xamarin Forms initially came out, but they, they recommend just to stay around, uh, away from it because the performance hit on it is so big. Um, so the grid um, helps you reduce nesting and layout cycles. Don't put a list view inside a scroll view. Use the header and footer. So what people will do is they'll get a um, they'll, they'll get a list view and then they'll put a grid with a header and then they'll put uh, well a scroll view and then put a grid with a header and then they'll put the list view inside that. But what actually happens is if one of the bits of text change that are inside the the grid, it, uh, it does a full layout cycle. Um, and the list view does a complete layout again. Whereas um, if it's just the list view, then it doesn't uh, have the layout cycle problem issue. Um, and don't use nested stack layouts when you can use a grid. So a stack layout is great when you've just got to stack some things on top of each other or uh, stack them horizontally. Um, but um, if you start nesting them, so you do a horizontal um, and then a vertical one, um, you're better off just using a grid. Um, so anytime you just want to stack some things on top of each other, use a stack layout. Um, otherwise, uh, if there's multiple things in, uh, within areas of an application, you use a grid. Uh, and don't use a grid when you can use a stack layout. As I said before, stack layout's good when you've just got things that want to go on top of each other. Um, and don't use a stack layout as a list view. So if you've got a, like a list of items, use a list view. Um, 
So on, on a grid, um, there's three options for a width or height. So you can use star, or you can use a static value, or you can use uh, an auto. Stay away from the auto and stick to either the star or the static widths. Um, prefer using the allowed options fill. Um, these are the defaults. So there's other options where you can use start and end, um, but um, using the fill is better, and you'll see why um, as we move along. So what I'm talking about now is the Xamarin.Forms layout system. Uh, this is actually internal to Xamarin Forms. You don't actually um, need to know this to build Xamarin Forms, but it's just good to know uh, this type of stuff if you're building with Xamarin Forms, just to understand um, the layout system, understand um, how things are working or why something might be running slow. So the layout system is in two cycles. The invalidation cycle, so um, you have a label, the text changes, the size becomes invalidated, it um, needs to bubble that up to its parents. Um, than the layout cycle when it actually does the layout. So the invalidation cycle. So every uh, the visual element, which is the base class of layouts, views, and pages, all have a, a measure invalidated event handler. So this is from the source code of Xamarin Forms. Um, so you don't actually, um, you will never actually see this when you're building. Um, this is just for um, theoretical purposes. So you've got the measure in invalidated. Um, then every time a child is added to a layout or a page, um, that page hooks onto that child's measure invalidated um, event. Um, and then actually when, just say like a label, the text changes in it, um, the on child measure invalidated is called, um, and then it goes to some conditional logic, and then it actually calls the event on itself, which will in, um, in, um, actually call the method on the parent. So it kind of looks like this. So you got a page, um, and then it's hooked up to the stack layout as event, and then the stack layout has um, three children, which it's been hooked up to all three of the events on the children. So um, just say the label, the text changes in the label, the size becomes, or the measure becomes invalidated, um, that will pop up to the stack layout. Um, then the stack layout will say, oh, yep, yeah, well, I need to tell my parent, and it, it'll go up again. So there is some conditional logic which will actually... Um, that happens in between that. So we can look at the, the layout cycle, which is the other cycle. So once we've had the invalidation cycle, then we've decided to lay things out. What actually happens is that before it lays anything out, it measures, and it can measure multiple times. So it, I, I know the grid and the stack layout have multiple um, rounds of measuring. Um, and then it'll uh, do the layout. So if we can put it all together, first we're doing the invalidation, and then we're doing the layout, the layout. So why do we actually care about what this does? Uh, because we can hack it. So you can see there's so many things that are going on there which doesn't look very nice. You, um, you obviously you don't want things like that to be happening in your application. So when a label changes, you can actually set it up so just this happens and it doesn't do a full layout of the whole system. I'm just going to give you a demo of that, if I can switch. So just to uh, show you the two views that we're going to be looking at in this demo. Um, first, we've got a stack layout, and it's got 10 labels in it, um, and the bottom label down here has a counter label. It's got a name. Then in the code behind of this, um, every um, half a second, we actually change um, the counter label text, so it's actually resizing, um, changing the text there. And then if we actually have a look at the grid, we have the same setup with our counter label, and then in the code behind, we're updating our counter up to 20. So let's just have a look at what happens there. So what I've actually done is this um, code base, I don't know if you can see it down there, uh, is linked up to the Xamarin Forms code base. Um, so we, I've put in performance metrics to actually track um, what's actually happening internally inside Xamarin Forms. So, if we have a look at our application output there, 
if we'll be able to see that. You can see that. So if, if I um, open up the stack layout, you can see here my counter is changing. Um, but what you can also see down the bottom here, the, the one that we're primarily concerned with is the layout child into um, bounding region. But what you can see is as that's gone through, um, the layout child into bounding region has happened 263 times. So if I just go back, do that again, you actually see it going up. It's not cool. So let's have a look at the grid. So you can see our count is going up in our grid. But if we have a look down here at our call count, that's just sitting there at 13. So what's actually happening there? Uh, so the grid, um, because in the grid I'm actually using a, a star width. Um, so by, by star width means that it just takes up the remaining space. Um, and the grid actually knows if it's a star or if it's a static width um, on all areas which um, the child, um, well, all areas of the grid that the child is um, covering, it knows that the child is fully constrained. So it doesn't need to recalculate everything. So it doesn't do those recalculations. Um, but if I change this to auto, let's have a look at what happens. So I've got my grid lay, uh, layout and I've got my counter going up there, but we've gone back to the call count of the layout going up again. So what actually happens is as soon as you change like a, a row to an auto height, which like a, a view is in, it'll actually become um, not fully, con well it won't be fully constrained, so it, the grid actually needs to do recalculation of everything. So that's why people say avoid the auto. So I want to maybe have some um, dynamic content in my application. So what I'm going to do is rather than have just the label, I'm going to have a, a box view. I'm just going to change the width of it just to um, move some things around. So on that time, I'm just changing um, the width request on the box. I'll have to change this back. So you can see my application output is not going up, but what's also not happening is the width of the um, blue um, box view is not actually changing. So in order to get that to work, I need to change the horizontal options. So by default, the horizontal options are set to fill. So it's like filling out the whole of the available space in that grid view. Um, but as soon as you actually change it to use one of the different horizontal options, which aren't um, fill. So it's now that's working. But if we have a look at our application output, the amount of layouts that it's actually doing is going up again. So what we can actually do is if we take that box view and put it inside a content view,
So it's still um, moving, opening or changing width. But if we actually look at the core count, it's not going up. So what's actually happening there is, um, so when, when you change it to a horizontal options and it's the first child of a grid, um, then it cannot be a fully constrained view. But what actually happens in this case is the content view is a fully constrained view. So the grid knows that it doesn't have to relay out anything um, for the content view. So the event will go from the box view up to the content view and then it will stop after the content view. So now there's performance things that um, we get told about that performance kind of makes sense. So um, reduced nesting, obviously you saw how much stuff goes on when there's like a layout cycle. Uh, don't change the defaults um, of the horizontal options or vertical options because fill is good. Um, use grid but avoid the auto um, and don't use a stack layout as if you obviously you can see um, with a stack layout when anything in a child changes it's going to do a full layout on basically the whole page. Um, so I'm just going to talk about Xamarin Forms um, pages, layouts and controls. Um, so this is kind of going back to basics of Xamarin Forms. Um, so um, every time you have a Xamarin Forms application, um, whenever you want to show something, it's always gonna, you're always going to have a content view. So anytime um, you have any bit of any view on the screen, it's, it's probably going to be inside a content view. Um, and then obviously here you've got a master detail, so that's the, your flyout uh, menu from, from the left hand side. Um, and then also the, the tab page here, so that's the, your tabs at the bottom. Anytime you want to do navigation in Xamarin Forms, you're going to need a navigation page because you won't be able to navigate without it. Um, so generally the way that an application would look is you've got like um, a navigation page and then a content page or a tabbed page and then a content page. But um, you can actually um, nest um, the content master detail, um, the master detail navigation or tabbed page. Um, so it depends, depending on how you structure the page, it can change how, how it actually behaves. So if you have um, a tabbed page um, with a child, one of the tabs, a child has a navigation page and then a content page, when you navigate on that child, um, you're still going to see the tab bar because the tab bar is at the root of the system. Whereas if you have a navigation page and then a tab page, when you actually navigate, you're actually going to, um, or the tab page is actually going to disappear just because the navigation page is part of the, is, is the root in this case. Um, and you can obviously, um, other things that you can do is you can have a master detail with a tab page as well. Um, and don't uh, use the carousel page. Um, Xamarin don't recommend it. Um, they recommend avoiding the carousel page. There's a carousel view that's uh, meant to replace it, which last I checked it wasn't actually released, but uh, I think it's pretty stable. Um, so some of the layouts. So as I, I've mentioned, the stack layout. The stack layout's great if you um, just want to stack things on top of each other or horizontally. Um, the absolute layout's pretty good. You can do layering with it. It doesn't look that good if you're, doing, if you're using XAML. Um, as I was saying before, don't use the relative layout. Uh, the grid is an amazing control. It really allows you to um, reduce um, your nesting. Um, well, one other thing that you can do, well, there's a few, lots of things you can do with the grid, but you can actually do layering. So if you actually want to layer images on top of each other or have a bit of content that's um, um, overlaid um, on, on top of each other, then you can do that easily with the grid. Um, Content view, that's just a, a view if you want to sort of add some extra padding or something like that. Scroll view, so a scroll view is, so generally like pages that come in two things. So you get a list page with a list of items and then you get like a details page. Um, when it's a list of items, you're using a list view. That already has a scroll view. Um, but when you're using a detail page, you normally want to put it in a scroll view. Um, just say somebody has a really tiny device and you still want to support um, them using the application, then you can have a scroll view and they can um, do some scrolling up and down. A frame is like a content view, but it adds um, some nice rounding um, to the view. Yeah, so stack layout, grid's good, um, and the scroll view, stay away from the relative. So the grid, it's actually, uh, the grid's quite easy to use. Um, it's and it, it, it works well with, um, with XAML as well. And once you sort of get your head around using the grid, you can do almost anything. 
um, works well with XAML, um, and you can be used to create really um, complex user interfaces with it. Um, and it's easy to reduce the nesting in your application. And as we saw before, it's easy to reduce the layout cycles. Um, one thing that you can do with the grid is um, when, when you're using a star which fills out the rest of what's left in an application, you can actually put numbers uh, next to the star. So you can have like a two star and an eight star, and that will give you a 20% and an 80%. So you can actually use it um, to do sort of percentage widths, um, which works well when you want to lay out things um, on um, different screen sizes. Um, what's the time? can do a little bit of a demo. So I'm just going to start building a grid out here. Um, what's pretty cool these days is we've got a, a XAML um, previewer. So you, uh, previously, you just when you opened it, the viewer used to come up, but now you have to right click and open it up. So if I start going to iOS there, put in my grid. Add in some columns. What I'm actually going to do is just um, do the um, two, do a 20% um, sidebar. We can't actually see anything yet because we don't have any um, content, but if I put in a box view, the background color. You can see that's there, and I can actually add it. And I can just change that column to one. So I can, um, so you can see there how you can use the grid, and you can kind of get these layouts which um, work on different um, sizes. So if I change that to a tablet it's still going to have the 80% and the 20%. Um, and one other thing, you can actually do layering as well. So if I change this, add some rows. And then if I make this... Um, Red. So you can actually um, do um, views over multiple spans. So I'll just change that to three. Cool. So um, you can see there that um, blue is um, overlaid on top of the red. Um, so I might actually jump back to the presentation. So I've already mentioned um, the list view, but it's really good. Like um, most of the applications that we build that are really nice leverage the list view a lot. Um, and it's much faster now with the solo cycling, the data template selector, and the alternative to grid. So um, whenever there's a dynamic number of rows, you want to be using the, the list view. And you can add, avoid adding and removing um, views when the binding context changes, because um, this is actually going to cause um, lots of layout cycles. So you can actually um, combine the controls. So this view here is kind of a unique one, because um, most of the stuff at the top is um, static, um, as far as how many elements are going to be there. But down the bottom, we've actually got a list there. Um, so you'd be tempted to say, put this in a scroll view, I mean in a stack layout, um, and then dynamically have these things down the bottom. But if you actually did that, it would 
it wouldn't even load. It would take so long to load that it would be ridiculous. So the proper way to actually do this is to have, have it in a list view, have the top part as a list view header, have the bottom part as um, the, the different cell items, or the list view items, um, obviously using your um, recycling. And then down the bottom there, you can have 30 um, different comments. Doesn't really matter. Um, and then actually in the header, I've actually used a grid. And pretty much, I think mostly it's just um, one view. Um, so you can see here where I've actually got the, the pitch portrait there, and then I've actually got the play button. That's actually using the layering features of the grid. So one other cool thing that's pretty cool in Xamarin Forms is uh, the animation framework. So Xamarin Forms actually, um, before it was Xamarin Forms, they actually had a lot of um, animation. It was actually part of the original code that came into Forms was like an animation framework. Um, so that's why um, some parts of Xamarin Forms are slow, but there's this really powerful animation framework. Um, and the thing about an animations are they're post layout, so they don't affect the layout and they don't cause layouts. So they're smart, they're fast and smooth. Um, so it will not cause um, other elements to to lay out if you move things around. Um, and translations will not reset during the layout cycles. And it can be kind uh, combined to create complex animations. Um, don't use um, layout two because it's not post layout. Um, if you to use layout two. Um, when a page lays out again, it'll reset um, the location that you've moved it to. So you've got things like scale to um, translate, um, rotate, fade, pretty much all you, all you want. The only thing you can't do is actually resize things, um, but there is actually ways to do that. Um, you can control the timing, so if you want it to go for one second or two seconds or half a second, you've got the easing methods in there as well. Um, and you can combine it with the... Well, you can use... Um, you combine combine multiple animations using async in the task parallel library, and you can have um, complex um, parent-child animations. So you can do lots of cool stuff. So let's just do a bit of a demo. So that's, this is just a simple animation. If I come in here, this is kind of a combined animation where you're doing multiple things. You can also change uh, properties as well. So I'll actually show you something that I've been playing around with. Um, that uh, You should be able to go and get this code if you want to have a play around with it. I'll, I'll give you the, the link. Um, so I've been trying to like, um, well, I've only spent half a day doing it, reproduce the, the Facebook um, UI in Xamarin Forms, or oh, well, some of the cool things at least. So one of the cool things that um, I noticed, this is iOS, the, um, when you're actually scrolling up, it actually hides the little title bar. So this is done in Xamarin Forms where I'm actually using the translation animation features of Xamarin Forms to actually do that. So, and the thing is, when I'm actually doing that, it's not relaying out anything, it's actually happening post layout, so it's actually just translating things around the screen. So if I go into my wall just here, so what I've actually done in this case is I've got a grid, I've got um, two rows, one which is 80, which is the header area, another one which takes up the rest. Um, what actually happens is the list which I'm displaying underneath, um, it spans the whole um, page, because it has the row span of two, but I just translate it down initially, so it actually just sits down. Uh, and then if we go up here, I've got this um, header, which has a search bar, um, and you saw the image as well. And what happens um, as it scrolls up and down, it just changes the translation on them. So that's how you can actually get that nice scroll up and down there. 
Now, one other thing that I did, which... Um, so normally, if you're going to do like a menu and you want to do it really easily, you just use the um, the master detail. Um, but I mean, uh, Facebook has this thing where it comes out from the right, and I wanted to be able to do that as well. So basically, using the same technique, I've actually um, I create this friends list, which is just basically a list of the friends that you see, um, and I sit that below all the other views. Um, on the page, but I translate it across to the right, so it's actually um, it's actually just sitting off the screen here. And then when you open this, I just translate both of these um, list views across, so you can actually um, see them come across. So it's actually just moving them across. Um, and then using the same technique, one thing that um, Facebook has is this cool like button. So if that's sort of coming in, and that's using the same technique where I've actually just put this little view underneath, um, and then as I hit the like button, I'm just changing the translation of the Y and animating it. Um, if I have the friend list open and I scroll, uh, it just scrolls. I mean, you could... Um, so the question was... Um, what happens if I have the friend list open and then I scroll? Uh, at the moment, it'll just scroll. Um, you could actually set it up. So, I mean, we haven't worked on it for very long, but you could set it up so it actually closes. Um, you can kind of do whatever you want in that case. Um, what you would do is if you wanted it when someone touches there, if you wanted it to close, um, you would just put like a transparent view over the top. And then when you get a touch on that, then you just close it. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, is there any uh, questions? There should be a microphone if anyone has any questions. How do you enable XAML C? Is that like by default or? Yeah, so it's actually, yeah. Uh, so the question was, yeah, how do you enable XAML C? Um, it's actually disabled by default. They might change that in the future. But you can actually um, enable it at the assembly level. So we're just um, saying that we want to compile all the XAML in this assembly. So you can actually enable it at the um, the assembly. Let me just get rid of this extra. So you can enable it at the assembly level, but then if you want to go to, say, a certain view, then you can actually disable it um, at the view level. So you can actually enable it for the most part, and then you can just skip it for certain things. Right, any other questions? So I'll, be, um, I'll just wait out the back for a little bit after the presentation if you want to come up and ask me any questions. Well, thank you very much.